And what makes it even more dangerous is that when dentists were prescribing opioids, they're prescribing it at a higher rate to a very vulnerable population, that is adolescents. In fact, dentists were found to be the leading prescribers to young people 10 to 19 years of age. What's interesting about dental opioid prescriptions is that we know about half are usually left over. And for whatever reason, uh, dental opioid prescriptions are far more likely to be non-medically used or diverted than those in the general population. That there's something especially inherently riskier about dental opioid prescriptions being used uh, in unintended ways. In fact, for every 550 patients started on opioid therapy, one of those persons will die from an opioid-related cause within the next two and a half years. As these authors conclude in the New England Journal of Medicine again, we know of no other medication routinely used for a non-fatal condition that kills patients so frequently. This idea that the risk of addiction is well less than 1%, no, the CDC data tells us that the risk of opioid dependence may be as high as one in four. So this, of course, you know, begs the question, why are these opioids so addictive? And as most of you know from your undergraduate biochemistry, you know that opioids hijack the dopamine system in our brain. You know, dopamine being sort of like that pleasure neurotransmitter that gets released whenever we do something that's pleasurable or constructive or positive. And that's a good thing. But what opioids and other controlled substances do is they hijack that system, resulting in a supra-physiologic surge that quite simply our nervous system cannot handle. In fact, opioid use can result in as much as a 20 times higher release of dopamine, dopamine than normal. Uh, and again, that just simply overwhelms uh, our nervous system. And so what happens over time is that even though people get that initial surge, that initial euphoria from the dopamine release, what happens? Because our central nervous system cannot handle that super physiologic surge, we downregulate the number of dopamine receptors. Right? And we can see this in very elegant uh, brain imaging studies in people who abuse illicit substances. That over time, they release less and less dopamine because they down regulate the number of dopamine receptors available, creating that vicious cycle where the person tries to take more and more of the drug to get less and less of the high. Who is most vulnerable to this? Again, at a 